Huge movie fanatic Nate coming back at you, continuing my ever ongoing quest to rewatch and review every single Godzilla movie ever made. And I'm coming at you with the review for Godzilla 1985. Now, this movie um, is the only one, as far as I know, Godzilla movie in North America that's not available on DVD like officially in North America so all I have um, of this movie is the basically uh, New World video VHS of the American version which of course is Godzilla 1985 which features the you know American added scenes Raymond Burr scenes and everything like that um, in 1984 I'm pretty sure in Japan this movie came out which of course was the 30th anniversary of the first Godzilla movie, came out as Return of Godzilla, obviously not featuring Raymond Burr or any of the, excuse me, American scenes. And it's for me, it's like, oh man, you know, I, I'm, I know there's like bootleg versions or whatever. I just, I never had the motivation to track down, you know, a Japanese laser disc or a bootleg DVD of it. So, but, you know, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm very interested and excited to see the actual Japanese version of this, but, you know, in in that ab in the absence of the actual Japanese version, I'm going to review the American one, which is Godzilla uh, 1985, so, <clears throat> just like the very first Godzilla movie, 30 years prior, America shot some of their own footage, and once again got Raymond Burr, who they got 30 years prior, to reprise his role of Steve Martin, of course, when this movie came out, Steve Martin was a very famous comedian at the time, so he is referred to in the movie as Mr. Martin because they're not going to call him Steve Martin because it just people just laugh. At, um, in the credits, he's actually credited, you know, Raymond Burr is credited as Stephen Martin, but they don't, they only call him Mr. Martin uh, in the movie, which is funny. Mr. Martin. Um, this is the very first Godzilla movie that I ever saw. Because, let's face it, it was only a few years old when I was getting into Godzilla movies. So usually when you're a kid, or at least when I was a kid, if you're getting into something, you see, like, the most recent one. Like, you know, I saw the most recent Friday 13th at the time, which was New Blood, Part 7, The New Blood, when I was getting into Jason. You know, because when you're a kid, or at least when I was a kid, it was all about, like, the most newest thing was the coolest, you know. And since I've gotten older, it's not so much that. It's like that anymore. It's more like the opposite, where the older shit is the best. But uh, at any rate, this is the very first Godzilla movie I ever saw, and I just was like, oh man. You know, I didn't care really about anything but the monster stuff when I was a kid, and it's just like, I thought the monster stuff was so cool. And they did. I mean, like, this is like nine years after the last Godzilla movie, Terror of Mechagodzilla, was made. And it seems like they've really come far, like they come, they, it seems like they're, they're, it improved like nine years of improvement, that's a joke, <laughs> since uh, the last movie nine years ago. <clears throat> um, like, <clears throat> one of the reasons is because I don't think there's any daytime Godzilla scenes, and I think the, the reason I really make it really look cool is because it's all at night, and the, the, whoever the DP was on this movie, and also just the, the city, I mean, the city sets and stuff that they built for this movie, the model stuff, is the best, I, probably, in, so far in any Godzilla movie. It seems like just light years better and more realistic. Like, you know, and some of the buildings, the models they build are huge, like twice the size of the Godzilla, the guy in the suit. And I just love, like, the... The Godzilla stuff of this movie and Godzilla looks so cool and for the very first time they actually and maybe I don't even know if it's like this in, in any movies afterwards but they, they, they really did up his face really cool where for the very first time his lips like you know his upper lip will move uh, independently of the jaw so it'll be like uh, sometimes you know the so it gives it a little more you know and they, they did the whole inside of the top of his mouth and it just Godzilla like looks really great in this movie and, and the face is more articulated than it's ever been and the the roar is on occasion sometimes is slightly different like there's an 85 or Return of Godzilla difference to it then it's not the same old thing that's been recycled for 30 years there's a it sounds a little different which is cool something that's exclusive as far as I can remember to 85 um, 
maybe it's in Biolanti as well, but at any rate, it's the first time you've ever heard this slightly tweaked roar, which is great. The music in this movie, oh, yeah, some some kind soul actually put the whole album, the whole the whole soundtrack of this on YouTube, and I've been meaning to to download it. <laughs> for the last couple days and, and probably will do that. The music ever since I saw it when I was a kid, probably in 87 or 88, I thought was just the most epic, you know, freaking score for this, for a movie or for this movie ever. It's just like, I can't do it as you can see, but it's a hell of a, a hell of a score. Oh my gosh. So, you know, the movie really, uh, isn't, you know, particularly all that freaking great. I mean, the monster stuff is what's really great. I mean, like I say, it's like nine years after uh, the last Godzilla movie, and, um, well, one thing that is different is so much of those old Godzilla movies, the majority of them after, like, Godzilla Raids Again and stuff, were basically, after Godzilla, Godzilla Raids Again, in a lot of ways, was the last attempt at a halfway serious Godzilla movie, which was of course following the, the very first Godzilla movie. After that, all bets were off and everything went to goofy freaking bullshit, and so many of the movies were goofy bullshit. One thing about Godzilla 85, aka, you know, Return of Godzilla, is that for the very first time since Godzilla Raids again, we're going to a serious menacing and Godzilla's not the hero which I kind of got sick of that Godzilla being the hero shit. You know, that's for kitty shit. And Godzilla, again, is like the force of nature that he was in the very first movie. So, in a lot of ways, it's like a remake of the first movie to a certain extent. But what, what's really great, and they should have done this a lot sooner, is that they finally went back to that, that style or that particular style of just, you know, Godzilla being a, a man-made, you know, mistake. And he's, he's basically a force of nature. And he's not some hero for the kids to, you know, cheer at and stuff like that crap. But I can't emphasize, even having just rewatched it, you know, which is what, you know, this movie was made 30 years after the original Godzilla, and now I'm, I'm having rewatched it 30 years after it was made. That's crazy, man. Holy shit. Um,. But this one holds up a lot better than the original does, like, 30 years after that was made. I mean, this movie, 30 years later, which it is actually this year, is a Godzilla, Return of Godzilla's 30th anniversary. And uh, it'd be nice to have put out a Blu-ray somewhere in North America, by the way. I'd love it. But that's not going to happen this year, But because uh, we'd know about it already. But, uh, I... You know, to be honest, you know, all the human stuff and whatever that happens before the monster appears is like, oh, oh I remember. So that it starts with some Godzilla occurrence on the on the ocean with some boat. So this guy, everyone on the boat, oh, this scared me when I was a kid, actually, when the guy, when the, this other boat, sailor guy went into the boat that's, everyone's all dead, and it's just like, there's a shot where a hand comes down into the shot, and it's just like, Ugh! and when I first saw it, that, that part scared me, and then this big bug creature is like me and my dad was just laughing and I was like oh god tell me when it's over so as a little kid you know six seven eight years old that kind of scared me so whatever um no not say I wouldn't have seen it when I was six that's before 85 <laughs> so I would have been nine or ten or eleven or something like that <laughs> so uh shut up <clears throat> So, you know, the, the, the human story isn't that horrible, I mean, and then we see this kind of cute girl with short hair, which I don't really like short hair on girls, but whatever. So it turns out that the guy who's the only guy in the boat who survived that Godzilla encounter was is this girl's brother, and they get together and all this and that, and then there's a first a, a, a appearance of Godzilla where he goes, walks ashore, and basically gets this nuclear or this nuclear power plant or whatever and sucks out the radiation and these birds make them go away and they're like oh those birds those birds made them do whatever so if they can make a electronic device that mimics the bird sounds they figure they can lure them someplace and kill them that's the whole plot so i mean it's not it's not it's not 
you know, horrible, like, boring, like, Terror Mechan Godzilla. I mean, it's a, it's a plot that's, oh, that's fine. I mean, it's fine. But I gotta tell you that when, when the Godzilla stuff, when they make a movie like this where the Godzilla stuff is so cool, it's just like, I gotta, oh, you just want that stuff to happen. The very, the second appearance of Godzilla is really cool where, <clears throat> I think it's, a, I don't, I don't think it, maybe this is right at, I don't think it is after, I don't know, whatever. The scene where he's in the ocean and the, the people, are coming in planes and it's like sayonara sucker that's the dub version you know and they're shooting the missiles at him i mean this stuff looks so cool even 30 years later um so much cooler than godzilla any godzilla scenes have ever looked before and i highly recommend checking this movie out uh if you haven't because it's so badass compared to godzilla ever being before um and he just goes ashore and there's all these art army stuff lined up on the shore and he's like this and just <laughs> breathes like breathes and he just goes and wipes out the whole row of them in one breath and it's just so cool and then he'll end up in the city and like i say the the you know for the first time i mean this is the best in a godzilla movie the city sets look and everything and with, with buildings that are like tower over him which really gives it this cool realism because in every Godzilla movie, I think pretty much before this, I mean, the buildings are always like the half the size or less of Godzilla and stuff. And by having, you know, some of these buildings actually be taller than him, it really adds this sense of realism. And, uh, oh God, I was just going to start to wind down and end, but I would have forgotten this thing that I have to mention as a kid. And even now, um, almost 30 years after having seen it for my first time, Super X. I love like Asian, just whatever Asian, cool. I'm not so. I'm not really a. I, well, I'm not really an anime fan by any stretch of the imagination. But I like the Asian. I mean, like I, I grew up with Voltron, which of course is Go Line. So that's kind of anime and stuff. But I love all this Japanese, cool, like the the mecha, the mechs and stuff like that, and, and this cool design and this just idea of the Super X, this like hovercraft that hovers on that, and it's really badass for 1980 when the movie was made, it came out in Japan 84, like just, you know, they show a shot of the underbelly of the thing and it's like these rotors, you know, these these fans that are will move like this and stuff like that, and the Super X is very cool, um, and it's just like the music that comes out and it's just like doo -doo 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 and it's just like oh man in the the Super X versus Godzilla I don't know what they did to improve the explosions you know from the you know 50s 60s and 70s but the the explosions the pyrotechnics in this movie that that happened like when the Super X is shooting Godzilla and it'll explode on Godzilla and just like completely cover you know it will be completely lost in sparks and smoke and it's just so when I even when I watch it now like I, I watch it and just like it's so cool I add my own like I'm sitting there watching it on the couch and I'm going as explosions are happening I'll be like that's how much of a geek I am I'm I'm adding my I'm participating in a way where I'm like I'm adding my own God Japanese version of Godzilla sound effects so um, probably three stars, I think, for Godzilla 1985. And before I close, I will say that, the, you know, the Raymond Burr and the American shit, obviously in the first, very first Godzilla movie, is much more noticeable in that movie than it is in this. And I have to give whoever did the American stuff, the American footage props for not only, look, you know, having the lighting look very similar to the rest of the movie, I mean, even watching it, you know, being an adult and knowing that it doesn't really belong there, it's like, it looks really good and it's it's not, and it, it kind of fits into the movie in, it, in, in a way. It's almost complimentary, not to say that I'm sure the movie's better without it. But, you know, the Raymond Burr stuff really isn't that bad in the American stuff. And one and in closing, one of the very um, final things I'll say is that Especially now with this bullshit, oh man, this bullshit, you know, manufactured by the West problems with Russia yet again. I, I get so nauseous when I think about it. Whew. I will mention that uh, 
obviously things with Russia at the time this movie came out in America were not too great, you know, 30 years ago and uh, 29. So I think, I'm pretty sure, I don't know a lot about Return to Godzilla, but I remember reading years ago that there's this, there's like Russians in the movie and there's this Russian boat or whatever that's docked in Tokyo Harbor or something like that that controls the, the missiles or whatever. And I'm pretty sure that in the Japanese version there's a scene where this, you know, in America, in the American version there's a scene where this Russian guy's going in there and he's got his head's bloodied and all this is happening. He's trying to get into the missile control room. And I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that in the original Japanese version he's going in there to try to stop the missile from being, from you know, the, the atomic missile or whatever the hell it is, warhead, from firing. I don't know why. Oh, I bet, oh, I know, I bet I know why. I bet the, the fact that the ship was, you know, um, went under all kinds of damage, it accidentally triggered, I bet. And he was going in there, I think, in the original Japanese version to stop this Russian guy, to stop the missile from firing. And of course, the American version of this movie in 1985, when the bullshit tensions between America and Russia were, you know, whatever, higher than they were until up till up until recently. <laughs> the Americans' versions propagand pro propagandized this part, and probably shot a little shot of a like in a red red lit room the shot of the finger hitting the button anyway long story short in the american version of God, return of godzilla the russian is seen pushing the button to fire the nuclear missile and i just think that's oh my god that's so lame so of course you with like one shot don't quote me but i'm pretty sure you know they would have had to shoot that shot of the button whatever being pushed in order to make it look like the you know, the Russian is the one who fired it. But in closing, I will add that little tidbit. I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere about the differences in that scene compared to the original Japanese version and the, the American Godzilla 85 version. I'm sure that's correct. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think, I think that's right. Um, so in closing, that's lame. But uh, overall, the movie is just fantastic. And one of the... And like I say, I just... Oh! I'd give any not not any anything but like twenty dollars for a official Americanized official official American DVD or Blu-ray release of the original, preferably Blu-ray release of the original Return of Godzilla, which I'm not which I have yet to see, which would be very cool to have. So I'm sure it's going to come someday. As far as I know, it's it's hasn't happened because of licensing problems, which is very fun. I mean that's. What a pain in the ass. Freaking lawyers are going to screw the world, man. Um, Alright, several days later I forgot to mention uh, something that was really important. I probably already mentioned the, the music, I imagine, is just epic and just fantastic. And not only just for a Godzilla movie, but just for like in a movie in general. I think the music is so epic and huge and amazing. And one thing that I wanted to remember to mention, which of course I forgot, which is of course why days later I'm doing this little bit, is the very end of the movie, which I, as a kid, and even having rewatched it as an adult, do find to be one of the most surprisingly sad scenes, especially because the, the monster Godzilla in this movie is so much of a uh, hindrance to, to, to mankind that uh, you find yourself... Uh, because of a combination of the absolutely amazing, beautiful music and just the sad, you know, humans and the sad Japanese guy's face and stuff, you, you find yourself getting kind of sad, especially when I was a kid. Um, but I felt very much the same way having rewatched it just recently when, uh, you know, Godzilla's lured to the volcano and uh, tricked in there and blown, you know, basically walks. I think they blow out the the ground from under him or whatever, but I just wanted to mention that. That was something that obviously I had planned to, you know, mention when I had forgotten, so I wanted to make sure I recorded a little snippet in here to throw in there and, and say, yeah, that, that ending as a kid and even now as an adult in combination with just the, you know, the actors being like sad. I don't know why the actors would be sad, but they're not necessarily sad. They're just like, Oh man, there he goes, you know, but the Japanese guy seems kind of sad. So the ending of the movie is actually really, you know, throws you for a loop in a very surprising, like, 
holy cow, it's kind of sad. And the music is just unbelievable in that scene when Godzilla goes into the uh, volcano. So I wanted to mention that. So it, it, with that, I will say that, you know, if you have the chance, definitely check out Godzilla 1985 or Return of Godzilla because it's a three-star, in my opinion, badass Godzilla fun fest. And you know what that means. The next movie I get to watch is Godzilla versus Biolanti. So uh, lucky me, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.